All right. Okay, shall we work on the clean? I believe it's the clean. Let me double check. Yep, it's the clean. So we got, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, we have three clean, three variations of the clean that we're going to work on. We got the, well, let me, let me back up. Actually, three types of, of clean, clean patterns that we're going to work on, and then there's some variations to those. Okay, so we have uh, a rec, rec T, rec T linear, rec I linear clean, means that is a more straight and vertical pattern. And there's a curvy linear, so rectilinear, curvy linear, clean, the curvy linear word curve is more of a arc and I'll demonstrate those here in a moment and then there's the cheat clean and this one is the bridging that gap from deadlift to getting the kettlebell to the rack position okay if you don't have the clean down yet and perhaps the swing because swing is a uh, is the foundation for the, the clean in a lot of ways um, if you don't have those down then we'll use the cheat clean until you get your swing, your deadlift, and are able to wrap it up into the package of doing your clean. Okay, so rectilinear, more vertical, that would be like your, your dead clean coming right off the floor. Then you can transition into a curvy linear clean, which I'll demonstrate, and then the cheat clean. Okay, then obviously you have your variations where you got your one hand, one bell, um, and two hand, two bell. Okay. Uh, let's go into those. So the, the recti, rectilinear clean, I'm having a trouble saying that one for some reason, uh, is vertical. It's oftentimes we call it the dead clean, kind of like a dead lift coming off of the floor. So again, it could be singles or doubles. The single version would look like this. Again, like a deadlift, we're gonna straddle the kettlebells and then I'm gonna sit back, neutral spine, come up, punch the hand through, wrist is straight, knuckles are pointing up, elbows at my side, tall posture. That, that's my dead clean or a rectilinear version. And then all, all that happens is the kettlebell rolls out and goes right back to the ground. I'm going to keep it close to my body. And the analogy I like to use here um, to help. So we don't want the bell to get way out here. So my base of support is my feet, right? So as much as possible, we're going to try to keep the weight inside our base of support. If we go outside, then it's outside of the base of support, um, which happens when we swing and clean to a certain degree, but the closer we can keep it to our base of support and become an integrated, it's called a kagu, center of gravity unit, um, being integrated with your kettlebell, the better and safer it is. And force output, the ability to do heavier cleans will come into play okay so staying closer to you is better all right so um, the analogy going back is if I'm dead cleaning I'm coming up so I'm see my thumbs pointing back because that's how the, the V of the kettlebells are pointing back towards me or between my legs so my thumb should be pointing back as I come up I'm imagining that I'm zipping up my jacket so see there's my jacket and if I do this I'm just going to use this hand to kind of stabilize but as I zip up see that so <laughs> zipping up elbow staying in kind of tight I'm zipping up and then once I get to a certain level once once I transition from hand below the elbow to hand above the elbow I have to drop the elbow in and point up okay and then when I let it down, it's just almost like I'm zipping my sweater down. 
Hopefully that makes sense. So that kind of illustrates See that movement. There it is. I'm staying close. Come on up. And you see my elbows staying staying tight. I'm not winging out and chicken winging so much. There'll be a technique like that that comes later. Okay, so zip your jacket up, zip it down. That is the analogy for that curvy or the rectilinear plane. So I'll do a couple and let you see them. Okay, so and and all I'm doing is going right back to the floor and placing the bell between my feet. Now, if you're having trouble with well, let's not get into that. Yet. Let me let me demonstrate the curvy linear real quick. The curvy linear basically is a swing that you're redi redirecting the path of the kettlebell. So, if we took the swing like so, right? And it says, "Oh, I want a racket." There it is. Yeah, let's go back to the swing. Rack. I must remind you that remember what your engine is, right? And what your transmission is. Engine, transmission. This this creates the movement. Legs and hips. Okay. Core stays stable, transmits the force to the kettlebell. The wheels. Right? Alright. So that was your curvy linear. So what happens is as you're in the back swing, you come up, you extend the hip. So remember. I'm not lifting my back, I'm driving my feet into the ground to extend my hip. Key point, deadlift, swing, RDL, they all apply the same. I drive my feet into the ground to straighten my leg, knees and hips. I do not lift my back. And you can tell when someone's using their back when they're doing those exercises versus using their hips. So. As I stand, the bell will start to come off. So you'll see this hip extension happen first because you're gonna keep the bell glued to your hands or your body, keep it in tight, stand. And then as soon as the extension happens, the force gets transmitted and starts going into the bell. And then goes up, gravity brings it back down, rehinge. So there's, there's my swing, okay? Probably should have been in the swing video, but the, anyway. So that's that's the kind of the anatomy of the swing. The clean or curvy linear clean is really the same exact thing, except we're gonna redirect the path of the kettlebell. So I stand, bell comes up. We'll illustrate a swing, it's coming down. I'm gonna do the clean here. I'm gonna come up soon as the bell starts to come off. My hip, I punch up through, like I did in the rectilinear. You can see why the rectilinear is such a valuable tool to help build your your clean your clean technique. All right, so pop, punch up through. Vertical forearm, knuckles up. Women, you don't want the bell resting on your on your chest, so you're gonna be slightly further out than the guys. A lot of times you'll see the guys, well, when we rack, when we have two kettlebells, we'll rack and we're on top like this. I mean, you're, you're advised to stay more outside, which is a little harder. Sorry for that, but you're welcome at the same time. Okay, um, so that that's kind of the anatomy of the curvy linear. Hopefully that made sense. Remember, you're just changing 
the direction of the kettlebell. So that's where that differential comes in that I talked about in the swing video is uh, the arms will change, can change the direction or the path of the kettlebell in its direction. Cool, all right. Um, clean, let me change the page here. Red lights, again, they're the same. They're the active straight leg raise, rotary stability, trunk stability push-up, core stability, and the deep squat, okay? The remedial drills are the same as the deadlift. So rather than make a super long video here, just go back to the deadlift stuff. Your remedial drills are gonna be the same, okay? Um, I will show you a, a, a remedial drill specifically for the clean though. Um, I will say that you need to be very careful with this one. Uh, when I went through my certification, we used our partners, which was kind of crazy, but that's what we did. Anyway, this one's called the wall clean. And the idea behind this is to help us tame the art. And taming the art means, all that means is we don't want the kettlebell to get way out here. We want the art to stay short and close in tight. So remember I talked about the Kagu, the center of gravity unit. We want to make sure that the center of gravity of the kettlebell and our, and our center of gravity and base of support are closer together. It'll be safer, you'll be able to lift more and have better technique that way. Okay, so the wall, I'm going to move this so you can see what this looks like because seeing it from behind won't do it any justice. So I'm going to have you come up a little bit, see where I'm at. Yeah, uh, I'm going to actually turn this because the light will go this way. And we got light the other way, so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh boy. Um, so the wall clean. Start further back for obvious reasons. And if you have, don't do this on a wall that you don't want to hit. You don't want to damage your wall, right? So this is what it looks like. I'm just going to do a dead clean and I'm going to do it next to the wall so that I can teach myself to tame the art. So I'm probably like a foot and a half away from the wall. All right, you can see the value here. It, it, if, if I hit the wall, it's not good. I wanna get a little closer. So now maybe about a foot away. The other thing about this too, is it really makes you learn how to use your legs and hips and zip up and zip down. It's really, really good drill for that. So that's the wall clean. Whoops. All right, you guys, remember hips first neutral spine, good breathing. We'll, we'll break that down a little bit more later. All right, uh, so that was the stuff for the clean. All right, train, build your skill, and the, the workout part just comes.